Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. the Angie reporting for The Media Speaks. Make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Um, I, I've, I'm kind of like the person over here, and uh, at least the only one I know in this area of the United States that still gives a damn about Fukushima and the fact that it will lead to cancers to many, many people that are listening to this right now and trying to awaken people on things they can do to help themselves, such as uh, making sure you uh, take uh, like two emergency a day will do wonders for keeping uh, your cells from genetically mutating. Um, I thought it was time to do another Fukushima update, especially after reading in Kurt Nemo's uh, InfoWars article about the uh, possible Egyptian interim prime minister, he says it's a globalist operative. I'll let you read that for, you know, yourself. That's not what the story is. There was one line in it that just sent sh fucking shivers down my spine. Um, El Baradi is a former director general of the United Nations International Atomic Energy Agency. He currently serves as the Egyptian vice president under Mansour. Atomic Energy Agency, so basically George Soros has funded this swine and his history is in the Atomic Energy Agency, which, which if you don't know is a front group for, uh, they're supposed to be keeping an eye on nuclear developments. No, what they do is turn a blind eye to what, any, whatever problems the, uh, the nuclear industry needs to get around. Well, they make sure that suddenly they're able to get around it. And it's also a front in many areas for the, uh, the nuclear weapons industry. So, go ahead, read the article, but I thought it was worthy to note exactly what kind of scum we're going to end up with in Egypt. Somebody who is in favor of nuclear power plants that will do things like Fukushima did. I'm not afraid of cancer, Sam. It's going to get me anyway. Former Fukushima mayor died of acute heart failure. On 7-2-2013, former Fukushima mayor Yoshida Saichi, 86, died of acute cardiac inefficiency. The day he had a health problem at home and died in 1640 at the hospital, he won the first election in 85 and stepped down in 2001. This matters because cesium, along with many other poisonous elements that were set free to do all of their damage um, to all of mankind, damages the lining and damages other uh, functions of the heart. Fukushima Mayor, bam, heart attack, a year and a half later. Now, this matters, and th this, this is a really big deal because we have the entire infrastructure of the world depends on the state of Fukushima. If Unit 4 falls over, it is the end of life as we know it on the entire Northern Hemisphere. That is not me hypothesizing. That is absolute mathematical fact. Um, I want to get to another story that's also on Fukushima Diary. Once again, and this is not the first time that this has happened, Charger panel in Fukushima Dany ordered disorder due to a rat. They are having trouble at nuclear power plants. And this is Fukushima uh, Dany. This is not the one that is melting down. This is the one that's supposed to be in great order. According to TEPCO, their charger panel of the air-cooled gas turbine generator vehicle in Fukushima Dany was disordered due to a rat once again. For those of you that don't know, learn this. These things need to be kept cool. Well, perfectly normal, functioning, nothing wrong with them, they say, reactors. In Fukushima, this time in the working one, again, the one, not, the, not Daiichi, not the one melting down, one of the other ones, a rat can stop the cooling system. And it's not the first time it's happened there. And I'm stressing this because everyone knows that this has happened at Fukushima Daiichi. This isn't Daiichi. We have another one about to be melted down like Daiichi because of this. 
Before noon on 7-2-2013, the alarm sounded for the disorder of the charger panel, and they found a rat 15 centimeters dead touching the electric circuit. The air-cooled gas turbine gener generator vehicle was prepared in case of losing the emergency diesel, ge diesel generator. TEPCO filled the 3 centimeter hole for the cable where they assume the rats are able to enter. You can bring a nuclear power plant to a grinding halt with a rat. And yet that's safe. If these melt down, when they melt down, as they're prone to do, they release toxins into the air that can never be taken out. If someone dies and ingests this to them, if their body comes in contact with soil 500 years later, it'll be just as contaminated. The half-life of plutonium and certain kinds of uranium is in the millions of years. I want to say that strontium-90 or plutonium it's 214 million year half-life. That's forever, okay? This is something that affects the Earth forever. And it is possible that this stuff could poison the Earth enough that nothing grows. Nothing. If they do it well enough, even the cockroaches won't survive. Um, the Baltimore Sun.com watchdog group finds high levels of carcinogen in Pepsi drinks. This is an interesting story to me for a number of reasons, but I'm going to give you one of them. My girlfriend is addicted to this stuff. She drinks cherry Pepsi like it's water. She buys other things that she almost never drinks and then says, look, I bought this because I'm getting off pet. No, she's addicted to Pepsi. It's almost all she ever drinks. And it's amazing to me because I did something the other day. I said, do me a favor. When I, when I get done going to the bathroom, let me go ahead and uh, just swirl my finger in your pot because any disgusting thing that would be on my hands is better for your health in the same doses, by the way, than the high fructose corn syrup and other things that are poisoning you in the pot. And of course, that's gross. Eh, what's wrong with you? And yet, when something is much worse, we're not talking about you know, we're talking about cancer here. One of the one of the major uh, one of the major destroyers of life in the known world. Oh, it's fine. I can drink it. It tastes good. And I think this is, a, unfortunately, a problem in a lot of areas where you can show people proof that what they're doing is killing them, and they just... And I was talking about this to my brother. I, I, I don't know how people can't hear these things. How somehow, I mean... We live in a time when Paul Revere, when the people would have said, would you quit waking us up? A health watchdog group is releasing a study today that found high levels of cancer-causing chemicals in Pepsi drinks in 10 states, including Maryland. The Center for Environmental Health commissioned Eurofin's analytical laboratory in Louisiana to analyze Coke and Pepsi products that were purchased from 10 states. The group said that Coca-Cola and PepsiCo had pledged to change their product's caramel coloring as a result of a California law that requires labeling products with cancer-causing ingredients. Otherwise, they weren't going to label it at all, by the way. The CEH found that Pepsi brought in Maryland and nine other states, not including California, still contains high levels of the chemical for methylimidazole. The testing showed that Coke products have been reformulated. Earlier tests showed both Coke and Pepsi products had been reformulated in California. So Coke is still using high fructose corn syrup and, uh, and GMOs that will, in fact, lessen the quality of your life. And again, it's like the Fukushima thing. It's not that you're going to die. It's that you're going to live for a really long time suffering before you die. And most people are afraid of suffering, and they're not afraid of death. A spokesman for PepsiCo released a statement in response to the CEH findings that said the beverage makers, caramel coloring suppliers, are modifying their process to reduce the 4-MIE in caramel. All right, well, I'll just reduce how much crap I put in your pot. That's fine, right? Tastes good. 
The work has been done in California, and the rest of the U.S. will be completed by February 2014, so just keep drinking the cancer. You've got like a year, you'll be fine. The company's statement said, PepsiCo suppliers are also undertaking this effort globally. There will be no change in our product formula or to the great Pepsi taste that customers know and love. These are the dirtiest, nastiest, scummiest, most filthy people that ever lived! Stop supporting them! Oh my god, and, yet, and nobody in the world could possibly, you know, love their girlfriend more than I do mine. And that might be that when I look at her drink this, I just cringe. Uh, once in a while at amusement parks, if I absolutely have to, because there's nothing else there. Uh, if I'm drinking uh, rum and there's nothing else in the club to mix it with, maybe. That's it, guys. I'm telling you, there's something wrong with people that don't care about this. You're killing yourself. For those of you that want to live, I'm going to invite you to go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on the Nitro Hyphen Pack. Nitro Pack. When you click on it that way, not only will you go to the site where you will find the most amazing things, but you will also be supporting the Media Speaks. And they've got everything. They've got things for preppers, and everybody on the channel has been talking about prepping. I, and I'm going to keep on doing it, am not. I'm talking about people that are going camping. I'm talking about people that are going to have fun this summer. Hey, wake up! If you live in Ohio like I do, the land of ice and snow, we have three months of summer. June, July, August. Screw May. Screw September. There's never any warm weather. It's cold at night. It's awful. The good weather is now. We're in July. It's, it's July 9th. Right now. You're going to have a good summer. You better start squeezing it in. And this is going to make your life a lot easier. Mountain the house, pouch, rice, and chicken. Two servings, $6.29. Everybody's else is eating the hot dogs. You have a chicken and rice. Two servings, under $7, people. Um, Mountain the house, pouch, pouch, noodles, and chicken. Two servings, $6.29. I'm not looking at anything here that even hits $7. They've got the most amazing cook stoves here. When you're camping, you don't want something that weighs a freaking ton. So the place to go is here. Jet Boyer Helios 2 cooking system, $149.95. They've also got another cooking system by Jet Boyle, $99.95. They've got flameless emergency cooker, cooker, cooker bundles. Why is it hard to say cooker bundle? But it really is. $29.99, it's not easy to uh, say, but it's quite easy to buy. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Nitro Pack. Guys, i got a few more stories I'm going to get to. CNN money, 76% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Now, it's interesting, I'm not even going to lie about it. I work in a nightclub, and the main place I work is also topless. I don't even lie about it. That is the direction that the whole country is in. You will make money where there is to make money because everything else is utterly ruined. You're going to be making $8 an hour and starving to death. Um, again, that's why I say I am a libertarian. I am not Republican. They love to preach morality when the country is, if you go more the morality route, you're going to starve to death. Trust me, I almost did. Um, roughly three quarters of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck with little to no emergency savings, according to a survey released by Bankrate.com Monday. People in this country have never made less. Do you realize that one in four people now in the United States of America are making less than that quarter of America has ever made throughout the entire history of the country? Go to the, type in economic collapse statistics. It's a sight. You'll be floored. Fewer than one in four Americans have enough money in their savings account to cover at least six months of expenses, enough to help cushion the blow of a job loss, a medical emergency, or some other unexpected event, according to the survey of 1,000 adults. Meanwhile, 50% of those surveyed have less than a three-month cushion, and 27% had no savings at all. I have some now. God bless the people that I work with, but... That's exactly the way I've always lived. Always. That's all I've ever known. And I have a college degree. I'm a great worker. 
that's all I've ever known prior to now. And when this job ends, I have no idea. It's probably going to happen again. What I'm saying is our country has outsourced all of our good jobs. This is not a result of Americans being lazy. This is a result of our country being destroyed for us by the people who are running it, who we are being foolish enough to elect again and again and again. Oh, am I talking about Obama? One of many? Yes, I am. It's disappointing, said Greg McRide at Bankrate.com Senior Analysis. Nothing helps you sleep better at night than knowing you have money tucked away for unplanned expenses. Even more disturbing, it says, the saving rates have barely changed over the past three years. Even though a larger percentage of consumers report an increase in job security, a higher net worth, and an overall better financial situation. That is entirely, by the way, not true, but we'll just let it stand. So why aren't Americans saving more? Last week, online lender CashNet USA said that 22% of the 1,000 people that it recently surveyed had less than $100 in savings to cover an emergency, while 46% had less than $800. After paying debts and taking care of housing, car, and child-related expenses, the respondents said that there wasn't enough money left for saving more, which proves that the above statement that... Uh, Rates have barely, uh, even though a larger percentage of consumers report an increase in job security, higher net worth, net not true. Why? Because the Fed is printing money and skewing the, skewing the interest rate. And that's why that is not true. Making more of the money's worth less. You still with me? Last week, oh no, I already read that. All right. There really hasn't been much relief, said Megan Stanton, director of marketing for CashNet USA. The company is stagnant. $100 is not enough to help you in an emergency. Well, I'll tell you what. Maybe if you stopped outsourcing jobs, maybe if you punished the living hell out of any company that moved their products overseas by taxing them to hell and back to bring it back, they would move it. And my best friend said to me that I couldn't, I wasn't libertarian because they wouldn't put that kind of restrictions. I am a libertarian in this country. We do not live in a world where libertarianism is going to work when it comes to matters of job and trade because the entire world is not on one standard. So that does not apply all the way around. I am not libertarian when it comes to that. To do so would be an idiot and I'm not. Um, TheDailyBeast.com Greenwald, this is good news. Snowden's files are out there if anything happens to him. In other words, even if you kill him, you're not going to stop him. That's the kind of heart that I just love. As the U.S. government presses Moscow to extradite National Security Agency contractor Edward Snowden, America's most wanted leaker and a, a hero, as we know so far, again, as we know so far, has been a plan B. The former NSA systems administrator has already given encoded files containing an archive of the secrets he lifted from his old employer to several people. If anything happens to Snowden, the files will be unlocked. Right now, DJ Aram is like dancing around the room and he's really happy. Aram, when you hear this, leave a comment. Glenn Greenwald, the Guardian journalist who Snowden first contact, contracted in February, told the Daily Beast on Tuesday that Snowden had taken extreme precautions to make sure many different people around the world have these archives to ensure the stories will be inevitably published. Greenwald added that the people in possession of the files cannot access them yet because they are highly encrypted and they do not have the passwords, but Greenwald said if anything happens to at all to Edward Snowden, he told me that he has arranged for them to get full access to the archives. God bless your mind, Eric Snowden. Very good. Standing up for all of us. And until that changes, that is exactly my stance. Uh, last thing that I'm going to get to, RT.com, piggies being piggies. Yes, that's what I said. Ohio police set up fake drug trafficking checkpoints to fool motors. Guys, the only way around this, the only way, is for us to stand up in mass and refuse to stop. Again, if 50% of the drivers in one city made a pact to do that, they wouldn't be able to do anything. 
They can arrest you all. They can arrest every all these 50% of the drivers, cooks, doctors, nurses, ditch diggers. What, you're, you're going to arrest all of them? I've been saying it for 100 million shows, and if we don't do this, then this is what we're going to keep getting. You choose, people. I, I'm going to give you the facts, and then you choose. Can police officers trick automobile drivers with bogus traffic stops? Cops in small Ohio towns seem to think so, and now they're under attack for trying to sweep the city of drugs using a creative little loophole. No, by infringing on the Fourth Amendment. That is not just a tiny little loophole. The Mayfield Heights, Ohio Police Department is under fire after the city recently decided to establish a drug checkpoint on Interstate 271. Randomly stopping cars and combing them for contraband is illegal, though, so law enforcement has been using the next best thing, fake checkpoints. Happy 420. Cops in Cleveland's suburb of only 19,000 have been placing warning signs ahead of a bogus stop and then monitoring the behavior of drivers. If any cars demonstrate suspicious activity after being alerted to the phony roadblock, police say it's enough to stop and search them. You know, maybe they don't want to be tied up at a checkpoint because their ice cream is going to melt. Maybe they want to get to work on time. Maybe they don't want to talk to a cop and it's their right not to have to see your asses! Maybe that's it. Maybe there aren't any drugs in the car and maybe that isn't probable cause. Filthy bastards! I hate all of you. By all of you, I mean all of you that do this for a living and let yourselves be used to desecrate the Fourth Amendment, a God-given right. Cops swine in the Cleveland suburb of only 19,000. Whoa, who allows this? Police tried the trick last week when they erected signs reading drug checkpoint, police canine dog in use and prepare to stop. When they spotted cars trying to turn around, officers were deployed to find out why. It's none of their damn business why. And drugs should not be illegal. Drugs should be monitored. That is a correct view beyond all reason. Use the thinking part of your brain. Last thing I'm going to say, how can we defeat it, Sam? You're sitting there yelling into the camera, do you have any solutions? Yes, I damn well do. And it's going to involve somebody with just a little bit more computer programming than I'm good at. My background is in music and web and video design and uh, I'm not in programming your website, but in designing your website. But a programmer could do this, and here's my idea. It's, call it Stop a Cop. Steal the idea, call it Stop a Cop. What it does is anybody on their phone, anybody on their computer, on their laptop, on their whatever that gets online, puts on this site what their zip code is, what street, what city the cop is at or the checkpoint is at. Every single time you see one, you put that on, there, on that site. And that alerts anybody else that knows about the site to check it. So if you're leaving a bar and you've had two or three drinks and you don't want to deal with this, or if you just don't want your damned ice cream to melt, then you can, before you get in your car, go to stopacop.com and say, hey, wait a minute. If I take this street home, I'm going to get stuck with these swine. I'm going to go the other way, add two minutes to my journey, and save myself all the hassle of dealing with that. Now, can I do that? No. I'm smart enough to think of the idea. That does not mean I am smart enough to do the programming. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views. It is Sam I B begging you to steal that idea. Merry Christmas. I hope you get rich. God bless. Thank you for listening. Please donate to the show if you can. Go to the media speak. Check out the excellent work of Kyle Court and D. Lake. I've got articles going up there all the time. And make sure you check out Dana Mobley Chris. Uh, she runs the Charity Connection. She's been very, very sick. She's got lung cancer, and now we got to pull together so that she can beat it herself. Good night, friends. God bless.